Hello, this is a get, getting started with the CS1 game engine video that is intended to uh, get you all on board, uh, especially with some of the new changes that have happened. Now, if you don't have a glitch account, you can well either sign up ahead of doing this or uh, at the prompt uh, when you go to this bit.ly that's listed right here, you could just sign up at that point and then perform the remix. So this bit.ly CS1 remix is a just convenient link I put together so that you can quickly get your own copy of the base project. So if I type in bit.ly CS1 remix, I get this brand new remix of the CS1 game engine glitch project. Now again, if you didn't have a Glitch account, you would uh, be prompted to uh, create an account, or sign in with GitHub uh, and get an account going. And um, once you're in with your remix, you could, for example, name your remix up here. You can give it a your own name, like my uh, personal game, something like that. Then you can make as many remixes as you want. Uh, maybe you give it your own name and then perhaps you uh, just read through the README, which is always a good way to start, but I'm going to take you through pretty much everything in this README. I'm going to show you, first of all, you're going to get in here to the .env file, add yourself a little admin key, uh, and then add some allowed keys. I'm going to just put in uh, like credits, for example, credits. Um, and what those allowed keys are, are for um, things that you can store in the database uh, for the user, other than the defaults, which are just the username, the name, the ID, and the password. And there's another variable that's in there that's tracking whether they're currently playing or not. Um, so once we have uh, these set up in the .env file, then we can actually log in and see the game running. So if we go to show and in a new window, which is what we should choose, then we can just log in with the admin username and the password that we just set up, the admin key. So I put in right over here for, for this example, I just put 999. So I log in and we're already in the tech demo. We're already in the tech demo. Welcome to and CS1 Agency Headquarters. All visitors are required to sign in at the welcome desk. So we can see that the game engine demo is just up and running, your own copy of it. You can do everything that you can do in the engine with the demo and kind of go around and play around for a while if you wish to get acquainted with it. Okay. Uh, what I want to highlight next is that... Um, well, you can start going through some of the uh, tutorials associated with this. So, for example, maybe you want to go over here and look at the curriculum section and start looking at, if you click at right here, click right there, you can go to the limited tutorials so far, but I have a little bit in here. We can go through and see have some basic information about the kind of technology that's underlying the system here. And then I have um, also a few other links that take to other um, links that take you to some other uh, presentations. Okay, so enjoy that. Those are definitely not all we have so far. They're just uh, what's available at this point. Okay, now I'm in this uh, tech demo. I just want to illustrate uh, the data storage capability of it. So if I go in here and, for example, go and go to the JavaScript console, I can, for example, access the CS1 game engine global object here. Now you typically do this in your application where you would add extra components and so forth to make your own game out of it. But right now I'm just going to illustrate a little bit about the global object and some things that you can do. So I'm going to go CS1, uh, for example, let's just say DB. We can see DB, we have these different 
functions get and set and it's as simple as that we can get and set things on the database so what does that exactly entail well let me first write a little callback function let's go write this callback function and I'll kind of set it like that I could write it as a one-liner matter of fact let me just do that rather than using multiple lines let me go back and finish this I'm just going to store in memory here a little callback function um, I'll write over here console oh, log uh, the data that gets sent back and yeah right there so we have this callback function we're going to store and you would normally have your own callback function in your application this is just illustrating the principle so I put this callback function into the memory and what I'm going to do then is go ahead and just do cs1 db dot let's go save or no set I'm sorry set and uh, we're gonna set and let's just use that one I guess uh, right there set credits to 15 because I enabled uh, credits so if I click over here it says call back a success so when you set something in the database Provided it's an allowed key, uh, you pass in a call, callback function, then you should get success. As a result, um, it either returns success or fail. So let's take a look again where that um, .env file, and we said the allowed keys included credits. Now if you wanted something other than that, for example, uh, you just put spaces in between them. Like over here in this example, I put avatar space last score. And then to get that information back out of the database, all you need to do is go, instead of set, you're going to go get. So cs1db get, and we'll just get the credits, pass in that same callback function, and we get them back. Just to illustrate that we can just relaunch the page. Uh, let's go ahead. I'll cl let me close this up and go to a new tab. In this new tab, uh, let me go back to uh, what did I call that? My personal game. So I'll just go over here and go to the my personal game. I'm going to go back into this and log in with the admin key again. Open up. The console Welcome again. You would do this. Um, bring down the sound here. We would log in, uh, and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, define the callback again because it's not in memory until I go ahead and put it in memory. Uh, and then let me just go ahead and uh, run get credits, and we'll see that after logging out and logging back in, we're still able to get those uh, credits. So you can set whatever keys that you want to be allowed keys, and then you can set and get data on them. I want to just keep it the API that simple, but you can, of course, you can go in and extend it. There's a lot more you can do other than that, um, if you so like. Um, that's some basics uh, that's involved uh, in getting started, and hopefully you can appreciate how easy it is, and just read through the information, and let me know what you think. And then we will um, go ahead and uh, try to get back to you as soon as possible and uh, answer your questions. Uh, one thing you notice it here that said handling sign-in fail on the UFO. That's not signing into the game, but it's failed to sign into this um, into the office over here in this virtual space. So this uh, ship up here is actually going to be chasing me. So since I didn't sign in, I have this uh, ship kind of tailing me. So if I go anywhere, it's going to chase me, and it'll stop once it gets directly above me. Eventually, I plan on, for the tech demo, having it uh, put down a tractor beam and grab me and put me somewhere. But that's all the farther I've got with it so far. Anyway, all right? And I could sign in, of course, by clicking right here and sign in. And kind of I could have avoided that if I signed in earlier. All right? So thank you very much. Uh, please reach out. Take care.